So the next set of options we get to customize is the boot disk. And we'll talk about container in a little bit. Let's talk about boot disk first. And so boot disk simply just represents, okay, what kind of image would you like your virtual machine, um, in particular the operating system, what kind of operating system would you like your VM to be running? So the next option we want to talk about after uh, machine type is the boot disk. We'll talk about container in a second and how this relates to boot disk. So the boot disk simply houses your operating system, and this is going to be the volume in which pretty much the heart of your VM will lie. Your operating system will be there, your kernel, whatever it is you're using, whatever software you'll be using to run your virtual machine from the operating system, your kernel, will be housed within your boot disk. So let's, let's check the different options that are available. So when you click change, we get a set of selections between OS images, application images, custom images, snapshots, and existing disk. Within the OS images, we have a, a wide variety of operating systems we can use. So we have your typical, your Linux operating systems to some custom ones that Google creates called Container Optimize OS. We'll talk about this in a second. To your Red Hat, to your Windows, and other custom like deep learning uh, images that you may be using. For instance, if you're doing some deep learning on your uh, VMs, as well as other custom um, pre-configured operating systems that Google has approved. So pretty much every OS image here, Google has gone through and ensured there's one, the security, and two, that it works um, as expected. One thing to note about your images is certain images, well, based off of certain um, uh, operating systems, have certain licenses attached to them. So if you're just using a simple Debian one, if you click select, if you check your pricing, well, all you all, all that happens is that you're charged for the amount of space that you're being, that's being allocated. Let's close this view for a second. However, if we select something like Red Hat, that requires a license, if you create select, Red Hat is added there to about $73 a month. And what's interesting to note is that some of these um, usage fees or licensing fees pertain to the number of uh, CPUs that you have. So let's say you have more CPUs, the licensing fee will go up, right? This happens as well with things like Windows. So if you can select, uh, let's say Windows Server, it has its own cost. If you increase the number of CPUs, that cost goes up as well. So typically um, with licensed operating systems, they're charged per the CPU. Um, there's not much uh, change when you actually change the amount of RAM that's allocated. It stays the same. So let's go back here and select just a simple configuration. So within, so within the application images selection, we can run a particular, let's say, SQL Server instance. And a lot of these, are, by the way, are just Windows-based uh, SQL Server um, applications within a particular instance. Once again, these are licensed software. So if I click that, there'll be some form of license attached to it that is, once again, dependent on the number of CPUs that we have. Google ha also has the ability for the use of custom images. So let's say you have a custom image that your company has been working on and it has its own version of a particular, let's say Linux kernel and has its own modifications that are attuned to the application to develop. You can go ahead and upload these images to GCP and use them. So for instance, in my project, I don't have any image custom images, but if I did, I'd be able to upload them here. Or you can use a boot disk from a snapshot you've cre already created from another virtual machine. So if you had a virtual machine that you'd been modifying and you created a snapshot there, you can load up the snapshot. For instance, I just created a, a simple snapshot here from a, a, a sample app I'm, I'm working on that I can use as a boot disk. And so it will grab all the configuration from that snapshot and use it as a starting point in this virtual machine. And last but not least, you can use an existing disk that already exists. So if there's a persistent disk that exists, that is that. So if there's a per persistent, so if there's a persistent disk that already exists, you can use it as a boot disk to run your virtual machine. So long as that disk is based off of a particular OS image, and it's not just for storage or let's say things like files or like images or whatever it is. Um, so long as it's a boot disk, it can be used to start up your virtual machine. So let's uncheck that. So last but not least, we can select how big we want our boot disk to be. We can also select the type of boot disk that we have. So anywhere ranging from your persistent disk to your SSD. SSDs, as you probably know, have a higher um, input output operations um, than your typical persistent disk. So you can select between your standard persistent disk and your SSDs. And we typically know that SSDs have higher IOPS, so input out output operations. They're really good for random reads and writes that happen continually. Um, and they're pretty much significantly faster than your standard persistent disks, right? The only issue with uh, SSDs is you the trade-off comes with cost. The trade-off is that they typically end up costing quite a bit more. Um, you can collect, select the size of your uh, persistent disk, so your o boot OS. You can select the size of your boot disk. Um, we're given the limit about 65 terabytes. It's quite a bit. Let's see if you can actually put that in. Quite a bit. Let's see what price that is. Oof. Killer. Ugh. And one last thing to note about size is size tends to scale. So performance of your boot disk tends to scale with how big your uh, 
boot disk is. So if you have a small boot disk, let's say it's only 10 gigs, the performance would be would scale linearly to one that is 100. So this would be 10 times more performant. Well, according to the documentation, I'm not too sure how that, that works, but according to Google, that's how they go about um, ensuring performance. So if you have a really big one, like the 65,000 one, you expect it to be at least significantly more performant than one that's 10 gigs. And there you have it. That's how you go ahead and create a, a boot disk. You can also add more uh, disks, persistent disks. Maybe you want to have one that amounts for a particular storage or whatever it is. That can be added um, later within this particular drop-down menu. And I'll show you how in a different video.